Welcome to Accounting Made Very Easy, Episode 3. In Episode 2, we covered the Chart of Accounts, the General Journal, and the General Ledger. If you haven't watched Episodes 1 and 2, you can click on their watch cards now. Whether you're a business owner, student, or just curious about how finances work, this is the series for you. In this episode, we will cover all of the financial statements. Watch till the end of the video for a self-quiz. For review, the typical order of the accounting cycle is the chart of accounts, the general journal, the general ledger, the trial balance, the adjusting entries, the adjusted trial balance, the income statement, the statement of retained earnings, the balance sheet, and the statement of cash flows. We have previously completed the first three items of the accounting cycle, so we will continue through the accounting cycle, starting with the trial balance. Now that we know the balances of all of the accounts in the general ledger, we can use those to create the trial balance. A trial balance is a report that lists the balances of all general ledger accounts of a business at a specific point in time. The trial balance is prepared at the end of an accounting period, such as monthly or quarterly, to ensure the books are balanced before financial statements are created. The trial balance typically has two columns, one for debit balances and one for credit balances. Each account from the general ledger is listed in the trial balance along with its respective balance under the appropriate column. The main purpose of the trial balance is to verify that the total debit balances equal the total credit balances, ensuring the accuracy of the company's bookkeeping system. Because the trial balance gets its information from the general ledger, I will place it next to the trial balance. The balance for cash in the general ledger is $48.74. This is an asset account, so it has a debit balance. I will enter $48.74 in the debit column for the cash account. I entered a function in the Excel spreadsheet that automatically accumulates the total debit and credit balances. Inventory has a balance of $38.85. I will enter it in the debit column for the inventory account. I will enter the $40 balance for the lemonade stand in the lemonade stand debit column. Accounts payable is a liability account and liability accounts have credit balances. I will enter the balance of $25 in the credit column of the accounts payable account. I will enter the rest of the balances in the appropriate columns of the trial balance. The total debits equal the total credits. The debits and credits must be equal in the trial balance before continuing on to the financial statements. If they aren't in balance, you need to track back through the transactions to see where the problem is. Before preparing the final financial statements, accountants may use the trial balance to identify accounts that need adjustments, such as accruals or deferrals. After adjustments, a new trial balance, called an adjusted trial balance, is prepared. 
Johnny's Lemonade Stand doesn't have accruals or deferrals, so we do not need to enter any adjustments or create an adjusted trial balance. Because the trial balance is in balance, we can continue on to the income statement. An income statement, also known as a profit and loss statement, or statement of earnings, is a financial document that summarizes a company's revenues, expenses, and profits or losses over a specific period of time. It provides insight into the company's financial performance and profitability making it a key component of financial reporting and analysis. The income statement is prepared for a specific period, such as a month, quarter, or year. This time frame should be clearly indicated at the top of the statement. The top section of the income statement lists all sources of income generated by the company's operations. Following the revenue section, the income statement details all expenses incurred to generate the revenue. The final section of the income statement calculates the net income by subtracting expenses from the total revenue. Net income represents the company's overall profitability and is often referred to as the bottom line. Because the income statement gets its information from the trial balance, I will place it next to the income statement. In the income statement, the revenue is listed first. Looking at the trial balance, Johnny's only revenue came from his lemonade sales. I will enter the $180 for both the lemonade sales and the total revenue. Next comes expenses. I will enter the $10 for the advertising expense and $87.41 for the cost of goods sold. I will total the expenses. I will enter the expense total of $97.41. I will enter the formula for computing the net income, which is revenue minus expenses. Johnny's net income, or profit, comes to $82.59. Now we are ready to prepare the statement of retained earnings. Because this is a sole proprietorship, the equivalent of the Statement of Retained Earnings is referred to as the Statement of Owner's Equity. This statement shows changes in the owner's equity over the accounting period. Because this is the first month of Johnny's business, his owner's equity beginning balance is zero. His initial investment was $20. This is the amount he took from his piggy bank to invest in his business. His net income for the month was $82.59. Adding the $82.59 to the $20 gives him an owner's equity of $102.59. Because Johnny didn't make any withdrawals during the month, his ending owner's equity balance is $102.59. Next comes the balance sheet. The balance sheet provides a snapshot of the company's financial position at a specific point in time, showing assets, liabilities, and equity. It is one of the three core financial statements, along with the income statement and the cash flow statement, and is essential for both internal management and external stakeholders. 
The balance sheet is based on that good old fundamental accounting equation. Assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. We need the trial balance and statement of owner's equity to fill in the balance sheet. Therefore, I have placed the two statements next to the balance sheet. In this balance sheet, I will place the assets on the left side and the liabilities and owner's equity on the right side. Johnny has three asset accounts, cash, inventory, and the lemonade stand. I will enter the balance for each of these accounts, which I will get from the trial balance. I will sum the total assets by creating a sum function in Excel. There is only one liability account, and that is accounts payable. The trial balance shows that this account has a balance of $25. I will enter that amount. The owner's equity account has a balance of $102.59 in the statement of owner's equity. I will enter that amount in the balance sheet. I will enter an Excel formula to add the total liabilities and owner's equity. The result is $127.59. This is the same amount as the total assets. Therefore, the balance sheet is in balance. Assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. The last statement we need to create is the cash flow statement. This statement shows the cash inflows and outflows from operating, investing, and financing activities over a specific period. The general journal is required for this, so I have placed it next to it. What we need to do is go through the general journal looking for all transactions where cash was increased or decreased through our operations. Sales is part of operations. We can see that cash was increased by $100 on May 24th and by $80 on May 26th. I will add a description of cash received from sales and then post the total amount of revenue received through sales. Cash received is called an inflow of cash. Inventory is used as part of a business's operations. Johnny paid cash for his inventory on May 23rd of $63.13, and on the 24th he paid the same amount. This is a decrease, or an outflow, of cash of $126.26. What are considered negative values in accounting are usually written in parentheses and in red. I will add the description and the total cash spent for inventory. Expenses are part of operations. Johnny had one expense during the period, and that was for advertising. He paid $10 in cash for his advertising. The expense was also an outflow of cash. I will add the description and the amount. I will enter an Excel formula 
to compute the net cash provided by operating activities by taking the cash received from sales minus the amounts paid for inventory and advertising. Next, we need to find the cash flows that occurred from investing activities. Johnny only made one investment during the period, and that was the purchase of the lemonade stand, for which he paid $40. This is an outlay of cash, so it will be placed within parentheses in red. Because there was only one investment activity, the net cash used in investing activities will also be a negative $40. Next, we need to find the cash flows that occurred from financing activities. On May 5th, Johnny put $20 of his own money into the business, so this was an addition to the business's cash. On May 6th, Johnny borrowed $100 from his parents. So this was an inflow of cash. On May 25th, Johnny paid back $75 of the $100 he borrowed from his parents. This is an outflow of cash. So it is placed within parentheses in red. I will enter an Excel formula to compute the net cash provided by financing activities that will take the cash inflows of Johnny investing $20 and the borrowing of $100 from his parents minus the cash outflow of Johnny paying $75 back to his parents. Summing up, the net cash provided by operations, investing, and financing the total comes to $48.74. Since this is the first month of operations, the beginning cash balance was zero. Therefore, the cash balance at the end of the period is $48.74. True or false? The trial balance is created from the general ledger. The answer is true. Which comes first, the income statement or the statement of retained earnings? The answer is the income statement. Which comes first, the statement of retained earnings or the balance sheet? The answer is the statement of retained earnings. True or false, the balance sheet provides a snapshot of the company's financial position over a period of time. The answer is false. The balance sheet provides a snapshot of the company at a specific point in time. The statement of cash flows is divided into which three categories? A. Operating, investing, and financing activities. B operating, marketing, and financing activities. C, operating, investing, and capital activities. Or D, operating, financing, and production activities. The answer is A, operating, investing, and financing activities. Which of the following is not a component of the balance sheet? 
A, assets, B, liabilities, C, equity, or D, revenue. The answer is D, revenue. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Click on the link in the description below to get additional great free content. Share this video with your friends and colleagues. Comment below with any questions or suggestions for future tutorials. We love hearing from you. Have a great day.